guys, um, one of the plans is actually already a work in progress. Hi, hello. My name is Ali, and I'm coming to you from just outside Toronto. Today I'm drinking out of my mug from illustrator Lily Pulitzer, and in it I'm drinking, of course, Earl Grey, but today we're drinking Earl Grey from Keats & Co, which it doesn't, it doesn't come in this tin, this is false advertising, this is an old David's tea tin. But Keats & Co is the new tea brand made by John & Hank Green. If you've been here for a while, you know how much I love John & Hank Green, and they've had a coffee brand for a really long time. So when, just a few weeks ago, they launched a tea line, you're probably not surprised. I had to order it and can confirm, it's really good. Is it gonna unseat my all-time favorite Sloan Classic Earl Grey? No, but I do enjoy having it in the rotation for a little variety. So today we are going to be getting into our usual project updates format, but first I thought, let's do some summer knitting plans because it is the season. Now, as for what I'm wearing today, this is the first time on my channel that I'm not wearing something that I've knit. This is just a tank top that I got secondhand from Plato's Closet. And the reason that I'm not wearing something that I've knit in this video is that it felt wrong to wear a sweater in my summer knitting plans video, but I also have a real lack of summer knits in my wardrobe. And in fact, that's what we're here to fix today. Actually, one of the things in my summer knitting plans is a candidate to basically aim to replace this tank top because it's starting to look a little worse for wear. It has some little like holes happening down here and I think that it's time to retire it. And that means that I'd like to see if I can replace it. So without further ado, let's get into those summer knitting plans. So I'm gonna divide these into three different categories from sort of least likely to actually happen to most likely. So the first category I'm gonna call Honorable mentions. Honestly, the odds of me actually knitting any of these patterns are pretty low, but they were sitting in my favorites folder and I do find them just kind of fun and inspiring and just sort of get me thinking about summer knits. Maybe they'll work my way onto the more plausible end of my list later in the summer, or maybe there's something you might want to consider knitting, or maybe we'll just enjoy looking at pretty patterns together. So let's take a look. The first one on this list is the Intarsia Top by Anna Huseman. So if you're familiar with a lot of things that I have knit, I think it will be immediately obvious why this appeals to me. I've knit more than one sort of abstract, blobby, colorful garment, and this really brings all of those things that I love about the sweaters that I've knit into a summer garment. And one thing that's really cool about this pattern is that it actually comes with more than one different design. Like there is a pattern for the tank top itself. And then there are at least two, maybe three different charts of different designs that you can do in Tarja for to create the version of the tank top that you like the most. And I just think that's super cool. This calls for a DK weight yarn. And I feel like this could be a really good sort of scrappy project, a really good way to use up some bits if DK weight is a weight that you knit out a lot, or if you could hold a couple strands of something small or double, I feel like this could be a really good way to use that up. And this pattern fits up to a 59.75 inch bust, which is, it's just such a funny number because it's so close to that 60 inches that's so often used as sort of the benchmark of is this or is this not size inclusive. And of course, this isn't like a black and white yes, no thing. I think it's just so funny that it's that close to this benchmark and just not, not quite there, <laughs> but it's pretty good. Now, because this is in Tarja, it is knit flat, which is not my favorite thing to do. This is something that would have to be seamed at the end. And it's also knit from the bottom up, which is also not my favorite. So I feel like with a garment that is both knit bottom up and seamed, it's just really hard to know how that's going to fit until the very last stage, which is just a little bit of a gamble. And maybe this is why in a lot of the project photos, this is shown as a tank top over top of a t-shirt, which makes a lot of sense because I feel like with a kind of little itty bitty tank top, it's kind of important that it fits you properly. Otherwise it might feel like kind of risky to wear depending on how okay you are with different things showing or not showing at different times. But it is so cute. Like does this not just make you want to knit like cute fun summery things? Okay, the next honorable mention is the Aurora sweater by Ginkgo Bee. And the reason that this is in this category on it, like there's basically no way that I'm going to knit this, but that's only because I have my current work in progress of the cloud bow top, which is extremely similar. I was actually looking at this pattern when I was trying to pick something that ultimately ended up picking the cloud bow because they very much share the peplum style, the balloon sleeve, it's all there. I only ended up going with the cloud bow instead because I kind of like the way that the cloud bow has this very sort of unique structure to the top portion and the way that it's actually quite unfitted at the top. It has a more sort of boxy spacious look that I felt made it a really especially kind of summer appropriate, nice, light, easy breezy layer. But I do feel like if you tend to prefer things that are a little bit more fitted, this is the perfect alternative. And this fits up to a 58 inch bust, which I would love to see that go a bit further, but I have seen that many of the same designers other patterns do go up to 60 or higher. So this does seem like something that's very much on their radar. So this is knit out of lace weight mohair. Now it might not seem like the most summery garment and I, I will hand you that. Like this might be a little bit warm for summer, but Give me, give me like a summer evening. Like maybe we're going to like a summer evening, like garden party. I think that's where you wear this. And I think on that basis, it gets to be included here. Now my last honorable mention is also by Ginkgo Bee. This is the Pizu top. 
So this is a fingering weight pattern that is designed to fit up to a 60 inch bust. And what's really cool about this pattern is that you can wear this top in three different ways. And also depending on how you choose to color block the top, it can look very different in those three different ways. So I think the look that I actually prefer is this one where you actually have this sort of high boat neck at the front and then this very open tied back, but you can also wear it with the crisscross at the front to get a nice V-neck. You can either tie it at the front or you can also tie it at the back if you want a little bit less exposure on the front. I just feel like this is so fun. It just gives you so many different options to play with as far as colors. This could be a really good opportunity to use up some scrap yarn. And I love that the different ways you can wear this top really make it feel like very different outfits so i think it could just be a very like useful piece in the wardrobe and it could mean that you end up getting a lot more wear out of this top one downside for me is that this is worked flat and then seamed and i don't like not being able to try things on but i do make exceptions for the right pattern and this is one that's making me think about it okay that's it for the honorable mentions category so now we're gonna move into what i'm gonna call maybes maybe i'm gonna knit this i'm not sure it'll partly depend how long i spend on the things that i feel more certain that i want to knit but it's also possible that one of these might dethrone something in that category by the time that I get around to casting something new on. So these are all contenders. So the first is the Pottery Slipover by Knit Tail. Now this might be too similar in spirit to my cloud bow top that I'm knitting. This is part of what is keeping this in the maybe category, but it's just so cute that I just wanted it to be on the list. So this is a fingering weight tank top with this cute ruffle detail at the bottom that has a largest garment bust measurement of 67.75 inches. Now I couldn't tell from the Ravelry page how much ease is intended in this to know what the actual body size is that that's intended to fit. But based off of the pictures, I would expect that this would accommodate at least up to a 60 inch bust. Now, what's interesting to me about this pattern is that it's labeled a slipover. And in a lot of the photos, it is shown worn as sort of a vest over, slipped over other things, which I don't think is how I would be likely to wear it. I have just never gotten into the vest thing. It has just never clicked for me, but I feel like this just looks really cute as a tank top. So I think I need to do a little bit more digging into different people's project photos to see are people wearing this as a tank top? What does it look like? Does it work well? Or is it kind of proportioned and shaped in a way that really kind of demands something to be underneath it if you don't want it to be super duper scandalous? I'm not sure. So this one requires a little more investigation, but the pictures are really pretty and I am intrigued. The next maybe is the Pumetis top. This pattern is by Julie Knits in Paris. And part of why this would be a really smart pattern for me to knit is because this is from the issue of Pom Pom Magazine that I had to buy in order to get my cloud bow pattern. So I actually already own this pattern. And the other thing that is smart about it is that it would be a perfect opportunity to use up some of the many balls of We Are Knitters Touch Me Mohair, which I have left over from my No Girls cardigan. Because if you've been following that saga, you know that I bought a lot of this <laughs> and it turns out it's a lot more than I needed to. So I have a lot of this to use up and I think that this project would be a perfect candidate for doing that. It is designed to be knit out of lace mohair. It also recommends if you have a matching merino to use that in the cuffs and the collar, or you can just double up on this, I believe. But I do also have a little bit of merino left over from that cardigan. So I probably would use that for the edging. I think that if I were to knit this though, I would leave off the Peter Pan collar. I feel like they're so cute on other people, but I've just never been able to get on board with them for me personally. But I think that this would look super cute with just a folded stockinette collar as well. That keyhole detail on the back is so cute though. Is it weird to do that if there's not a collar on it? I don't know. This is the thing, this is the thing that I would have to think more about. I think that the real test of whether I end up knitting this might be how I end up feeling about my cloud bow when it's finished and how much use I get out of that because it's also an open gauge mohair top and I think that having some experience wearing that will give me some indication of how does that type of piece fit into my wardrobe? When do I actually wear it? What temperature conditions am I comfortable in it under? If I find myself struggling to get use out of my cloud bow top, I would probably avoid knitting something like this and might instead use this to make like a lento sweater or something like that in the future instead. This pattern is designed to accommodate up to a 60 inch bust. It's also intended to have a ton of positive ease, like the finished garment measurement, I think is like 75 inches because like 13 and a half to I think 15 inches are recommended for positive ease. So I think there's also definitely some wiggle room there for this to fit a body larger than 60 inches as well. I do also see in looking at the Ravelry page that this is knit from the bottom up, which gives me a little bit of pause. Not not a ton because like I said, I think I have a ton of this. I don't, I don't think there's any risk of me running out of enough materials. I just am wary of fit when you're knitting things from the bottom up. It just gives you so much less control and ability to make sure that it lands where you want it to. I don't know, but it is really pretty. I do really like the lace pattern. Unsure. Okay, the last maybe item is the Koi Tea by Ginkgo Bee. Now this also like sort of fits into the square neck thing I was talking about. I feel like in some pictures it looks more square neck, in some pictures it looks more almost boat neck, in some pictures it looks more just rounded. And I haven't delved close enough to know 
are those deliberate modifications that different people made or is this just a difference of how tight your neck hole ended up being i'm not entirely certain and this one of the things putting this pattern in a maybe for me is that i do feel like this is one of those garments that looks very different depending on how it fits on your specific body because there are some project photos where i absolutely love it and i'm like if it could look fitted in that exact way on me this would be perfect and if it fit in this exact way on me this would not at all be a top that i would choose to add in my wardrobe so it feels a little bit dangerous in that way i mean as dangerous as knitting can ever be i suppose though i do feel like probably someone in the history of the world has been impaled by a knitting needle so it's not entirely danger free is it this pattern is designed to accommodate up to between a 60 and a 64 inch bust depending on how much of the recommended ease you want which is great we love that so this one is knit in the round from the top down as a raglan and i really love how sort of simple and minimal it is while still feeling kind of unique from a lot of other knit t-shirts that i've seen so i am intrigued by this one i'm thinking about this one okay so that now brings us to what i'm going to call concrete plans these are the things that i feel most confident that i'm actually going to knit this summer now is this a guarantee that this will happen of course not we all know that the best laid seasonal knitting plans do not always pan out the way we think that they will so this is what i'm currently thinking now but i make no promises first off we have the tecla top by milena Jihala. this is a really cute little camisole that looks like it's sort of intended to be part of like a pj set she also has this shorts pattern that can go with it so it's the spaghetti strap top that goes really low in the back and has a cute little ruffle detail at the bottom now one of the things that appeals to me about this pattern is that it is knit top down which makes it really ideal to me as a summer knit one skein project because it lets you really easily customize the length of it to suit the amount of yarn that you have left so i think that this is a good candidate for a sort of one skein from the stash sort of project so this is knit out of light fingering weight and its sizing accommodates up to a 64 inch bust which we love to see and it looks like the way that it's constructed is that you start with the two triangles and you go down from there and then you're adding i-cord edging and straps as a final detail there are also quite a few examples of this one on ravelry and i feel like this is one of those patterns where it kind of just looks good in everyone's project photos this isn't a pattern where I really love some people's and other people's I'm like oh I hope mine doesn't turn out looking like that it seems quite promising as a sort of what you see is what you get sort of project okay the next pattern on my more concrete list is the Sailor Swift top by Veronica Lindbergh and if you feel like maybe that looks familiar this this is indeed the pattern that I'm hoping to knit to replace this top so this pattern is a striped tank top design that has a slight sort of racer back shape at the back and I is it true that I've never knit stripes I don't think that I've ever knit stripes and I hear people talk a lot about stripes being really fun to knit because there's sort of a just one more stripe sort of feeling as you're going along. I imagine similar to when you're reading the kind of book that has really short chapters and you're like, just one more chapter, just one more chapter. So this feels like a really fun one. This has been on my list of things I want to knit for quite a long time. And I have, I think, sort of a renewed motivation to do it after just watching AKA Nora Knits work on hers because she has just been loving the process so much. And I feel like it might finally be time to do this one. So this top is intended to fit with a bit of negative ease. So the pattern accommodates up to a 59.5 inch bust, which is pretty good. And this is a pattern that I definitely would need to buy yarn for. I'm thinking this might be the time for me to try the Knitting for Olive silk. Amy from Knee Knits knits with that yarn a lot and always speaks very highly of it and I've always been kind of curious. I've yet to knit any summer garment out of an actual like summery fiber. <laughs> like I, I, I'm okay with wearing wool in the summer. I'm not someone who would never knit a summer garment out of wool but I am curious to try a fiber that is more intended for warm weather and kind of see how I feel about that. How do I feel that the knitting experience compares and how does the wear experience compare and how do I prioritize those things? So I feel like this would be a good project to experiment with that on. Okay, and finally on the list of more concrete plans is one that you might have heard of before on this channel. I was sort of talking about this months ago as a future plan, an imminent plan, and it kept just kind of not happening until I was like, okay, I need to stop talking about this until I'm actually doing it. So I'm bringing it up now, I'm resurrecting the Fausta Roulette. So this is a pattern by Loki Bold Knit, which accommodates up to a 56 inch bust, which I would love to see go a little bit further, hopefully in the future. But one of the really cool things about the fit of this pattern is that it's not just a bust measurement. You are actually creating a gusset at the bust. So you are customizing it to both your bust and your sort of rib cage, I believe, measurements to create a really custom fit, which I think is really cool. And I did months ago when I was talking about doing this project, I did create a swatch. So this is my swatch for the project. I knit this out of La Bien Aime Felix in the color Winterfell, which is this gorgeous sort of dark greeny blue. It's 75% Falkland Merino and 25% Corydale. And this skein has 620 meters or 710 yards for 100 grams. So I think that if I was intending to knit the bralette as written, I think that I would probably only need one of these, but I did end up purchasing two because, and this is why it has gone unknit in my plans for so long. 
I would like to knit a full length version of this. I would like it to be a full length top. The challenge of this is that it is knit from the bottom up. I did spend a couple of hours trying to figure out how to flip the pattern. I got stuck at the gusset. I'm not advanced enough at pattern design and construction to figure that out on my own. But the reason why it being bottom up is a bit tricky to me is that in order for this to fit the way that I would like it to, I'm going to need to do increases to fit my hips, which means I'm gonna need to do some pretty specific math that needs to be pretty accurate to figure out how much I need to increase by and what rate those increases should happen at. I did briefly consider starting with a Judy's Magic cast on so that I could just knit the bralette as written and then come back and add length later once I knew exactly how the top was going to sit and could do increases just more intuitively as I went. But then I realized that because this is knit in a two by two rib, you would see a jog in that fabric where the knitting changes direction and becomes offset by half a stitch. And I just feel like that would bug me. So we're not gonna do that, we're gonna do math. The problem is that I just keep kind of forgetting to sit down and do that because when I want to knit I don't want to sit down and do math I like math I'm fine with math but it's a very different brain space and it's just not what I want to be doing when I want to be knitting and I just don't really think to do it other times so I really need to just set aside some time to do that figure this out so that I'm ready to cast this on and can actually start it because I already have the yarn I already have the swatch like it is time it is time to get the faster bralette finished especially because I feel like this would just be such a beautiful piece to have in my wardrobe. I just feel like it looks so elegant and sophisticated. I think that it could work really well both in the summer and also in colder weather under a layer. I really love the square neck on it. I'm really finding right now every few years there will be one very specific thing that I have always loved and it's always been something that has really fit into my personal style that just becomes incredibly popular and mainstream and it's very easy for me to find for a while. And one of those things is a square neck, both like this and like a boat neck. And I feel like both of those things are really having a moment right now and I'm really, really happy about it. <laughs> okay, now that's it for the summer knitting plans and we're going to get into my usual project update, but we're gonna do this sort of backwards from the usual order. I mean, we sort of already are if you think about it. Typically I would have future plans as one of the later segments of my project update video and we just did those. I don't have any acquisitions, so if we keep moving backwards in the order, we are at whips, and that's appropriate because, surprise, um, one of the plans is actually already a work in progress, and why, why skip over a segue that good when we've got it? And before I get into that, I just want to mention a couple of things. So first of all, a shout out to Bonnie from A Knitter Obsessed, who mentioned my channel in her recent video about other knitting podcast recommendations. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Bonnie and a big hello and welcome to any of you who are here because of Bonnie. I went and checked out Bonnie's channel. Her channel is a similar size to mine and we started around the same time. So I feel like we're a little bit in this together and I want to give Bonnie a shout out. She's so delightful. I've gone and watched a few of her videos now. And if you tend to like the kinds of things that I'm knitting, I think you might also really like Bonnie because she integrates a lot of really fun colors and patterns into her work and she's just like fun she's a very sort of relaxed but really articulate way of talking about her knits that i really like the other thing i want to mention so this is a large film that i have to pick with youtube but also an apology that i want to make so i as of many videos ago started reviewing and editing the subtitles that go along with my videos so if you're not aware when you post a video to youtube youtube will auto generate captions for it but they're not <laughs> They're not amazing. They do a better job, honestly, than I thought that they would, but particularly with knitting specific words, it just has no idea what I'm saying. So for every video I put up, I spend a good couple of hours watching the video back while reviewing the transcript and making edits to it to make sure that it's accurate because I do really believe in the importance of that. So all this to say, this has been a priority for me for months now on my channel, and I just discovered that on some of my videos <laughs> where I went in and I put in my corrected subtitles, for some reason, they did not publish correctly to YouTube. So videos on which I had spent hours preparing these correct subtitles, those have just been like chilling in the back end of YouTube unpublished and the videos have just been running with the standard auto-generated captions. So if you're someone who relies on those, I'm really sorry. I thought that they were there and I'm so annoyed that they weren't. So I've gone back now, those are now published on those videos. But most infuriatingly of all, on my most recent video, the same problem happened except that the corrected subtitles were not saved anywhere in the YouTube backend. And because I thought that they had published, I didn't have them saved anywhere like in a Word doc or anything on my side either. I'm so mad. The fact that the time is just gone <laughs> with like absolutely nothing to show for it. I'm not happy. So I will be going back and fixing the subtitles on that video soon. So know that that is coming. So if you were really missing that, I'm sorry. And now I know not to trust <laughs> YouTube posting my subtitles in the future. So I will be adding a step to my process where I double check that in the future and also um, save all my transcripts in a Word doc because we trust no one now. 
Okay, now which of these summer plans have I decided to cast on? I am working on the Tecla Top by Milena Juhala. So you've already seen this in brief, but to get to more of the project stats, this pattern accommodates up to a 64 inch bust, which we love to see. It has nine different sizes and I am knitting the size two. This pattern costs seven Swiss francs, which converted out to about $11 Canadian. And let me show you what I'm making it out of. Now, if you've been here a while, this yarn is going to look familiar because I am finally, 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 finally <laughs> using the Hedgehog Fibers Oh So Fine in the colorway Budgie, which I have been trying to figure out what I wanted to do with for months now, like since the very, very beginning of my channel. So here we are, folks. We are finally doing it. So this is my wound up cake of the yarn. Oh So Fine is a 100% merino two ply light fingering weight. And it's also a non superwash, which I really love. And it comes in a 100 gram or 425 meter ball. So I ordered this directly from the Hedgehog Fibers website and I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not a budget yarn. So this is small batch, hand dyed in Ireland. And Hedgehog's Fibers is really known for its super fun, vibrant, beautiful colorways that are very thoughtfully dyed. People tend to talk about them very well in terms of like avoiding color pooling and other things like that from what I've seen. So with that said, the one skein cost me $49 Canadian plus $11 shipping for a total of $60 Canadian, which brings my project total, including the pattern to 71 Canadian or about $52 US. And this is what I've got so far. So this tank top is knit from the tops of the triangles and you start out knitting flat and I am getting close to the point where I will join in the round. And then you do the remainder of the body, including the ruffle from there. And then go back and add in I-cord edging and I-cord straps at the end. So to knit this pattern, I sized up from the 3.5 millimeter needle recommended in the pattern to four millimeters. And I did this sort of based on a gauge swatch, but one that wasn't for this project. So I had originally swatched this yarn thinking that I was going to create something different and I was trying to match the gauge for that and to match that gauge I did that successfully on a 3.75 millimeter needle but the gauge for that pattern is actually tighter than the gauge for this pattern is supposed to be so I knew what I was going to get on a 3.75 and it wasn't this so I upsized to the four I haven't actually done a proper gauge check on this I only just recently even kind of got an area large enough that I could accurately do that and it seems like it's gonna fit I don't know I think that when when I am casting on the final stitches around the back when I'm joining it in the round, I will do a more careful check to make sure that it seems like it's going to land right and I'll make adjustments to the overall circumference at that point if I need to. But hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully this is just what it's supposed to be. And now if you haven't been here from the very beginning of my channel, I just think it's worth noting this yarn has been in my stash since last October. I bought it so excited. I felt like I had finally found a dyer of variegated yarns where the colorways really grabbed me and really felt like something that I did love and would actually want to wear. And I just have spent the last several months struggling so hard to figure out what to do with it. It turns out I still really struggle with variegated yarn. I find it so beautiful but I struggle to imagine it in things that I will actually want to wear. And even when I find a variegated yarn that I think is so stunning and like the most perfect for me one I can imagine, it's still just a little bit tricky <laughs> for me to figure out what to make it into. It's just so much harder to me than regular yarn, but here we are, we're finally knitting something out of it. So I cast this on July 4th. I'm currently filming this on July 10th and we've seen some real progress. I have to say after spending so many months on my no frills cardigan that for so much of that process was just knitting really long rows back and forth for months and months where I could sit down work for two hours and it wouldn't really look any different when I was done <laughs> you know I might have added like this much to it it was really fun particularly when I was very first starting this and just making these triangles which increase out from this very tiny top so it so quickly went from itty bitty to like a whole triangle. It was just so nice to like see real progress in one sitting. This has just been refreshing to work on and it's it's very simple, it's in stock and it. The increase repeat is incredibly simple. So this has really been a lot of fun to work on so far. I will say though, as I am continuing to increase to start to go kind of along the side of the body, this is, you can see that's the top of one of the triangles and it's now extending all the way over here. I mean, every row is longer than the last. <laughs> And I'm starting to feel it in the going back and forth. So I am very much looking forward to the point where I get to cast on the back stitches and join in the round and can then just proceed in the round very relaxed from there. I do think that will be a really nice point to get to. Good news is that I'm quite close to that. I think I'm about five rows away from getting to do that. So that will be nice. One of the other things that I am kind of excited, kind of apprehensive <laughs> about with this pattern is that, like I mentioned, it does include an I-cord edge which I have never done before. I've managed to go a couple years of knitting a lot of different patterns, but I think largely because I haven't done a lot of summer garments, 
I've never encountered an I-cord edge before, so I'm very curious to see how I feel about that. My initial instinct is that I'm not gonna love it because I tend to not let, like to me it feels like more of a finishing part of the process, kind of a fiddly, similar category to a bind off sort of thing. But that's not usually how I tend to hear people talk about it. I tend to hear more neutral to positive things about doing an I-cord. So I don't know, I'm curious to see how I find that process. I'm hoping that I don't hate it because I mean, there's gonna be quite a bit of it on this, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Also in part because I hadn't done a gauge swatch to exactly the gauge of this pattern, I did just last night do a mid-project test block because I couldn't remember whether the gauge swatch I'd made for the other pattern had changed from when I first knit it to after I blocked it. So I wanted to make sure, okay, this looks reasonable now. It looks like it's within a reasonable range of fitting me, but is that still going to be true after blocking? So I did a mid-project block, took measurements before and after, and it seems virtually identical. So that's nice. And as a fringe benefit of having done this mid project block, I can show this to you much better than I could have a couple days ago. Because before, since this is stockinette without the eye cord edge added yet, it was doing a lot of curling in on itself. It would have looked a little more like, like, like this if I was trying to show it to you a couple days ago. So now it's much nicer and more flat to work with. And I think that will also be nice when I'm trying to work on the eye cord edge. So that's a nice bonus. So this is the beginnings of my Tecla Top, which I guess has officially been promoted from summer knitting plan to just summer knitting. Congratulations to the Tecla Top. Okay, the next whip that I have to talk about is also sort of summer knitting plans adjacent. Now it's not a pattern that was on this list, but that's really only because I had already cast it on and already talked about it a little bit on this channel. So in no world is it a plan, it's just a reality. But it is sort of summer appropriate, and that is the Cloud Bow Top by Reed Keys. So this is a pattern that accommodates up to between a 62 and a 66 inch bust, just depending on how much of the intended positive ease that you want. And it also comes in both a top and a dress version. So I'm knitting the top and I'm also knitting the size three. Size two would have corresponded better with my measurements, but my gauge is coming out a little bit small so I chose to upsize to the three just to be safe. This pattern is from Pom Pom Magazine so it did cost me 11 Great British Pounds to buy the whole magazine because I couldn't just buy the pattern and so that came out to 1942 Canadian and I'm knitting this out of the Wandering Flock Mohair Lace in the color Cosmic Tie Dye. Now I picked this yarn up at Knit City Toronto so I didn't pay any shipping costs and I bought two skeins which came out to 108.48 Canadian for a total project cost of about $127 Canadian which would be about $92 US. I'm knitting this on the 6.5 millimeters recommended in the pattern and I mean honestly this this is why I have the gauge problem I I don't know why I thought that my gauge problem wouldn't persist in a case where the needles were really big and the yarn was really small for some reason I thought that would like negate my problem it did not I should have upsized but let me show you where we're at with the cloud bow so the last time we talked about this there was not nearly this much garment going on <laughs> I brought this with me for a cottage weekend and it was a really rainy and dismal cottage weekend and I got a lot of knitting done. So the way that this is constructed, you first start by knitting a flat rectangle panel for the front and an identical flat rectangle panel for the back. After that, you pick up and do sleeves and then you pick up and do the sort of peplum at the bottom as well as the finishes on the neck and the sleeve, which in this case is just a folded stockinette. Last time we talked, this absolutely did not have this much length and I believe it had one sleeve and it definitely didn't have neck edges. So last time we were talking about this, I had done one of my sleeves to where I thought that I wanted to stop. The pattern is written for a full length sleeve, but when I tried it on just to check my length, it was at sort of a three quarter length and I was like, I think I actually really like this. But I was hesitant to settle on that for sure because the neck was not yet done. And I wanted to kind of know exactly how it was gonna sit on me before I decided whether the sleeves were the right length or not. I was sort of unsure about Okay, in the interest of not breaking yarn when I don't need to because I'm concerned that in a garment like this that's so open that woven in ends will be really obvious, should I wind up my second skein of this yarn so that I can start the next sleeve and then continue on the body using the other one and then come back and finish this sleeve if I do decide I need to add more length or even if I don't just to do the cuff with that first ball? Because one of my considerations was I'm not sure if I'm gonna use both skeins on this project and I don't wanna wind up one of the skeins if I'm not actually gonna use it yet. But it turns out that the answer to this was very obvious because both of my concerns were total non-issues. <laughs> so first of all, my friend Lauren, who you may remember from my last video giving me great tips, Lauren, always full of great tips, was like, actually, I was just working on a very open gauge all mohair project and I found that in that type of situation, if you just weave ends in as you go, the way you sort of just twist tails together over the course of several stitches within a row, that it blended in really, really well. So breaking yarn wasn't a concern that she thought I should worry about. And I was like, interesting. And then I also had the thought, why don't I weigh my ball of yarn to see how much of this I have left and whether it seems even remotely conceivable 
that I might finish all of this project off of just one ball anyway. And it turned out when I did that, that I had less than half of the ball left. And considering I still had to do another entire sleeve and the bottom peplum part of the body, which is definitely more material than the top front and back panel of the body, that it was very clear that I was gonna be getting into the second skein regardless. So really, both options would have been fine. Breaking the yarn and starting the other sleeve with the first ball would have been fine, and just leaving that ball and starting the second skein would have been fine. To the point where now I don't even remember which one I did. <laughs> like I think, I think maybe I broke the yarn just for the sake of portability because I was taking this to the cottage, but it was it was such a non-issue. So if you're knitting this or something similar, just know it it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, let's try this on. Okay, we have the top of a top and let me get up so you can actually see this properly. Okay, so this is still on the needles. So the bottom of the body is definitely cinching in quite a bit right now. It actually goes down more like to here, which is quite close, I think, to where I probably want to bind this off. But there's something that I want to figure out how to do before I do that. We'll get to that in a minute. But from here, you can really see the nice, like poofy, billowy sleeves. I feel like the folded stockinette cuffs look really nice and polished. And I really love the sort of strange construction of this. I really like the way that the sleeve kind of becomes part of the side body. Like these are knit by starting to knit flat before you join in around so that part of that sleeve becomes the side body. I just feel like it gives this really interesting sort of structure to an otherwise very sort of flowy and amorphous garment. And the back is all sort of curled up as well. But a key thing to note with this pattern is that there is no short row shaping at the back of the neck. And this is what I wanted to ask about because I'm thinking that I mean, it's a little bit hard to see here just because of the way that the needles are making it kind of curl up on itself, but the front definitely sits lower than the back because there is no short row shaping. So I'm thinking that I would really like to add some short rows to the bottom of this garment before I bind it off. And now this is a thing that I hear about people doing all the time to modify sweaters and other garments. And I, I mean, I've done short rows in patterns before, but I don't know how you figure out how to customize that in a project that doesn't currently have it. And in my sort of attempted Google searches, I was really just finding tutorials on how to do short rows, like when it's called for in a pattern, here's how you do the turn, like kind of demonstrating how you do those short turns, but not explaining how you sort of calculate how to do them. Like how many stitches do you do over how many rows? How do you figure out what short rows you need to do in order to customize a garment the way you want to? If this is something that you have insight about, or if you have a favorite tutorial that explains this really well, please, please let me know in the comments. That would be super helpful. And speaking of customizations, I did do a little bit of a tweak when I was doing these folded stockinette cuffs. The pattern tells you to knit twice the length of the cuff and then fold it and stitch it down using a sewing needle. And I just really didn't want to do that. I just folded it down and then I just did a row basically knitting the last row of that cuff together with the first row on the inside and then bound off from there. So I'm not sure how the tightness of my cuff compares to what it would be like if I had done it the way that it's written in the pattern, if I had done it sewn. I did when I did the actual bind off, I used the, I think it's called the surprisingly stretchy bind off method. So I think that helped preserve some stretch. Um, I don't know how exactly it would have compared if I had actually stitched it, but I'm, I'm really happy with how that looks. Like I feel like it's not tight, it's not uncomfortable, but it is doing a nice job of cinching in that bellowy sleeve and kind of keeping it where I put it, which is nice. One other thing I found in working on the second sleeve, well, <laughs> the thing that I found was one of my um, interchangeable needle set cords that is the smallest circumference that I had. And I forgot that I had one this small, it had gone missing somewhere. And it turned up and I was like, oh, I could actually knit the sleeve on this and therefore not have to use magic loop. So I did the first sleeve with magic loop and then I did the second sleeve just on this shorter circumference cord. I can tell which one I did on which because on the one with magic loop, I did end up with a little bit of laddering, if you can see that there. I'm hoping I can even that out a little bit by just sort of like picking at stitches around it, we'll see. But it was just interesting to me because that's not usually a big problem that I have with magic loop. So I'm wondering if just the combination of the tiny yarn on the big needles is sort of particularly unforgiving of that maybe. So. If you, like me, have a smaller circumference needle somewhere, I would encourage looking for it before you start a pattern like this because it um, it might make a bigger difference than you realize. Another thing that I found, particularly with working with this needle and yarn combination, was that when I was working in the round, I was getting kind of an unusual amount of resistance, trying to sort of just push the stitches up onto the left needle, to the tip of the needle to be worked. I was finding they were tending to get really sort of bunched up and feeling really tight and reluctant to move. So as I was getting frustrated with this, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Isn't this like that thing that I learned when I tried knitting socks two at a time, but on two separate needle sets? 
that your that the size of your left needle actually doesn't affect anything could i just put a smaller needle on the left hand side to help things slide easier and the answer is yes so i downsized that left needle pretty significantly i think it was on a needle like half the size of the one in my right hand and it has absolutely no impact on your gauge because it's always that one right needle is always the one that you're using to actually make the stitches and determining their size and the stitches were just flying off the left needle now i will say this did particularly because it is a lace mohair, which tends to be more slippery. You definitely have to be more careful when you set the project down. There were definitely a few times where I, out of habit, just put it down without really thinking, being used to my stitches sitting very securely on my needles, and I picked it back up and the needle had like slid way out of like 20 stitches. <laughs> and again, because the needle was so small compared to those stitches, it was very easy to just stick it back in. It wasn't a big deal. I didn't lose any work, but just if you choose to do this to make your life a little bit easier just beware that you do need to be a little bit more careful when you put it down or just use a stitch stopper at the end but if this is a problem you're having if you feel like things on your left needle are just not wanting to move when you have an interchangeable set just swap in a smaller needle on the left it affects nothing turns out except making your life easier now another fun thing about this top is because i was working on it at the cottage which in my family's cottage is um heavily populated my parents share the cottage with my aunt and uncle and then both of these families have two fully grown children one of each children on each side has their own entire household as well. So when we're all there, it's a lot of people. And quite a few of those people actually know how to knit. And even those who don't know how to knit know how to wind a ball of yarn. So in a way, this top has really kind of become like a group project. So first was my nephew, who you may have seen knitting on the channel before. He's never knit a project of his own, but I did teach him the basic knit stitch. And sometimes he likes to steal my knitting and do a few. So he did a few stitches on this. And then my niece was bored because it was raining. And originally she was she was starting out helping me wind up my second hank of mohair because I had brought it to the cottage with me, but I had forgotten to cake it before I left, which was silly because at home I have a swift and a ball winder and at the cottage I have none of these things. So I was like, okay, you're bored. Do you, do, do you want to help me? So I was sitting there knitting while she sat across from me working on balling it up. Now, after a few minutes, she got bored of that and was like, actually, you do this part, I wanna do the knitting. <laughs> so she then did some knitting. When she got bored, my cousin Kelsey decided to do some ball winding and then I think maybe did a bit of knitting on this. And then my aunt Chrissy, who also knits, asked to try. And she, she did probably a good like inch or two on this as well. So Chrissy definitely gets credit for some of the stuff. And then later on, once I was knitting it again, my cousin Kelsey's son, who's like eight maybe, he was watching me knit and then he just, he just started he just picked up my ball of yarn and was just kind of like holding it, just kind of cradling it in his hand and sort of helping it to like roll over as I was knitting from it. And yes, I mean, because he's like eight, he would occasionally forget he was holding this and like wander across the room. <laughs> like, come back, come back with my yarn. But so this, this top has really now become a whole family affair. Okay, now last, but certainly not least, I sort of have a finished object. So if you saw my most recent video, this isn't actually news to you, but because that was sort of a special format, not a usual project update video, I feel like I need to include just kind of like a quick overview version for posterity. So if you missed my last video, my no frills cardigan, which took me six months of my life, <laughs> is finally complete. And because it took so very, very long, I felt like it deserved its own whole video. If you haven't already seen that, I will pop a link up above to the full project process vlog that I made, pulling in clips from all my past project updates and giving new thoughts from the flip side of having this thing done. So if you're curious in more details about this complete and utter saga on which I embarked of knitting the biggest cardigan of life, go check that out. Okay, if you've been here before, you'll know that usually at the end of my videos, I will spend a bit of time talking about books and writing and other creative things that are not knitting. Now, if you're one of my favorite people who's really invested in that segment, I'm sorry, we have to skip that segment today just because with the addition of the summer knitting plans, this is just already going to be a bit of a beast of a video, but I promise you next time we will catch up. We'll have lots of good bookish things to talk about. So until then, happy reading, happy making, happy whatever, knitting and not knitting creative things you're doing. If you're not subscribed, but you'd like to be here next time, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. If you already are, you're my favorite and I'll see you next time. Bye.